Jack Smite said that Rod Steiger had said that he would just kill to play play the part of the lead. It really appealed to him because there was no less than five personalities. And Smite said, one more outlandish than the next. So I'm going to talk about Smite, well, quote Smite on Steiger now. Because he was always saying that he was having to try and get him to rein it in, which is something he didn't do on The Illustrated Man, the film they did after this, where Rod Steiger just goes nuts in that film. But Smite said, ah... Say please, then I don't hang up. Rod Steiger, please, please, please don't hang what a piece of work. When he first told me about the shabby treatment he'd had from Marlon Brando in the famous I could have been a contender scene from On the Waterfront, I realised how hypersensitive he was, both as a human being and as an actor. When the close-up of Marlon in that very important moment was filmed, Rod sat patiently off camera and played the scene fully with Brando. But when it came to do Rod's close-up, Marlon left the set and had the script girl read his lines. And it was shattering for Rod. It didn't affect his performance because he's a master of his craft. Brando was an idol who dumped on him. Not to the fact that his director, Elia Kazan, could have allowed this to happen. Steiger never treated his brother and sister actors with this much disdain. In fact, in my time working with him, he went out of his way to make them as comfortable as possible. My only problem with Rod was trying to induce him to minimise his acting moments. It wasn't that he ate the scenery at times, it was that he chewed it. I approached him so much in this regard that at one point he shouted, All right already! And we came to what we both thought was a good accommodation. After rehearsing a scene, he would look at me and if I felt like he'd chewed enough scenery, I would discreetly squeeze my thumb and forefinger together. He would nod and then play the scene with infinite taste. He was a wonderful, affectionate man, a fine actor, and I love him. And I think this is just wonderful because, I mean, he does have a lot of freedom in this film to just play. And it was a film he was particularly fond of himself. And like I said, when you think of Steiger, you tend to think of this very, like Brando, an intense sense of masculinity. And Steiger went on and did The Illustrated Man for Smite a couple of years after this. And in fact, Smite actually got the screenplay to that whilst he was working on this production. So they went on to do The Illustrated Man together. Now, the reason I love this so much is because it's Rod Steiger and he's just camping it up in these scenes. When you think of Steiger, you think of him as this really manly man. The type of actor who can fill out a role like The Illustrated Man. This very dangerous, on edge type of character. But then he completely takes to a role like Dorian, to a duck to water, this strange little wig seller. Now, Smite said about shooting this scene, there was one incident where fun and work came together perfectly. And it had to do with the scene where Steiger played a gay hairdresser, intent on killing another woman. He had faked his entrance into the woman's apartment by telling her she's won a new wig. And in the middle of the scene, her partner, well, actually it's her sister, and spoils his time alone with her. A huge argument erupts and the partner's shooing Steiger from the apartment. And her part in line to him is get out you homo. Rod and I couldn't come up with a fitting departure line. Our scriptwriter had left us with this rather weak and don't come back you think. And in the script, Rod's reply was, and the same to you, I'm sure. So he obviously didn't use that line. And that night, Rod and I had dinner at Joe Allen's restaurant on 46th Street. Our waiter was a terrific gay guy. He had overheard us talking about the problem of coming up with a good line for his exit. And so he supplied it to us in spades. The next morning when we were shooting the scene and we got to the exit, Rod and I looked at each other with joy. We hadn't told anyone what his parting shot was going to be. I went to the sound man and said, stay with Rod at the door on his exit. He did, and when Rod got his cue from the furious partner, get out, you homo, he turned to her, smiled in a very female sort of way, and said, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. The crew cracked up so loudly that the take was spoiled and we had to do it two more times. It turned out to be the best laugh of the picture, and Rod and I will always be in debt to that waiter. And I just think that's just such a lovely story from Smite. Don't raise your voice. 
you homo. Well, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just the way he responds to it. It's wonderful. I want to comment on this little bit, the intensity of this phone call. Now, when Steiger talked to the Toronto Film Festival in 1991, and he came out of the actor's studio. In fact, both they both did, actually. But he, and he was just very into the method and everything, and he was asked if any films had really affected him, you know, if he got into a character too much and it had affected him. And he said there were two. One was the role he played in The Pawnbroker, and the other was this. And he said it was this scene in particular, just the scene, not the whole film, because obviously from Smite's reports, they also had a lot of fun. But he said all of this dialogue was ad-lib. You know, even though John Gay wrote the script, they seem to be rewriting it, especially in terms of dialogue, all the way along the production. He didn't know what it was maybe some attitude towards women or or issues with his family from the past. He doesn't know quite what it was. But all this stuff started to come out of him, pour out of him. You can just see it in him now, this, this anger, this spite, this intensity. And he said he just, he didn't know where it came from. It just came out of him, just spewed out of him. And he finished the scene and the director said you know do you want to go again are you happy with that take or should we go again and he said no let's move on he said the sickness that poured out of him in that minute he never wanted to feel it again didn't know where it came from but it was obviously something that was inside him and it shocked him and you can just see it in his performance it's just amazing I mean look at that yeah the guilt The spite, the anger, it's just incredible, absolutely incredible.